One more time again, peace, love, Rastafari, Ross Nicholas coming to you here from Oahu, Hawaii, preaching, teaching, sharing the truth with the I and I brethren, I and I sistren, and I and I people, Cha people, Cha live children, yay yeah. I have been thinking a lot lately about Babylon, the system that downpresses Jah's people, the system that is corrupting nature and life itself, the system that bastardizes the children of Jah, the children of light, and hardens their hearts to his truth and his love for them. The love for I and I. I have lived on Oahu for the past four years now, and observing the situation, the surroundings, I've seen that Oahu is a microcosm of what's going on in the entire world, not only in terms of the way people live and their experiences in life and the beauty of nature itself but of the way that the serpent has deceived people to bow down to it, to worship it, even when Jah provides everything for all the people living in this place, people still turn away from his light and move into ways of darkness. And there's no call for that. There's no reason for that. The ancient Hawaiians knew that they were powers, a power, greater than themselves. That they served and ruled the Akua, the Great Spirit. And in managing this land, this place, they were able to live sustainably and thrive without need for skyscrapers or buildings or superhighways or building houses on the lands that were used to cultivate crops. Backstory. Oahu is part of the Hawaiian island chain. It is the third largest in area of the Hawaiian islands, just behind Maui and the big island of Hawaii. And it's by far the most populated island of the Hawaiian chain, with over a million people, including um, about 200,000 U.S. military personnel or more, and about 800,000, 900,000 civilians. It's between 900,000 and 1.1, 1.2 million, out of a statewide population of 1.4 million. Oahu is beautiful. The island is lush and green. The mountains bring rain from the ocean, water condenses coming from the north off the ocean, rises the vapor, and it rains down on the island and creates a paradise where normally there would be a desert. Oahu and the rest of Hawaii is at the same latitude that the Sahara Desert's at. So without the dynamic forces of nature, the wind, the water, the sun, Oahu would be desolate. It would be a desert. But in this place, Jah has created a paradise on earth. An unbelievable well of energy springs forth from the mantle through the crust right here in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The Hawaiians revered this place. They regarded it as the most amazing place they'd ever seen. And through a system of land management called the Apua'a system. They lived sustainably, they thrived, they saw how life moved through the land. The water comes over the mountain, rains down into the valley, and then the streams form in the valley, nourish the valley, and then the brackish water that has collected the nutrients from the soil flows down to the coast and then enters the ocean. Well, the Ancient Hawaiians used that system in order to grow things like taro, which is a rooting plant that can be used for carbohydrate 
and I believe protein sources. They use the brackish nutrient rich water for fish ponds further downstream and they practice sustainable fishing in the ocean. They paid attention to the time of year, the season, the way that fish would reproduce and they use that season of time in order to know when to harvest fish, know when to hunt for the bounty of the ocean, and they use that in order to make sure that they didn't exhaust their supply, that their supplies in terms of the bounty of the sea, the bounty of the land, were always providing in a way that was able to sustain the people. At a time, there was more than a million people living in the Hawaiian Islands. But through European colonization, the bringing of disease, that population dwindled to where it was lower than 50,000. And slowly but steadily, the populations of the islands grew, not just with the resurgence of the Hawaiian people, but with people that were brought in to work the plantations from all over the world. Portugal, Korea, China, Japan, Filipinos, uh, people from all these places came to the islands to work plantations that were owned by wealthy landowners, mostly European settlers. And that system that the Europeans brought of land ownership, land management, the working of the land as they saw that the land should be worked in opposition to how it had been worked by the ancient Hawaiians brought about what we see today on the island of Oahu, which is exploitation of the land, the only resource that the islands have to provide to the rest of the world is tourism or the prostitution of this place for people's enjoyment, for people's amusement. 95% of our goods and services are farmed in, are shipped in, brought in. The islands that once were able to produce for everybody no longer produce for the people living on them, the Kama Aina, or the people of the land. And not only that, but the Kanaka Maoli, or the ancient people, the native people, the native Hawaiians, there's nothing here that is sustainable anymore. These buildings, this system of government, this corruption, these ways that are against Jah's way, these ways that are against God's way, are causing the people to suffer. And the contrast between the city and the country is profound. The countryside is beautiful. On Oahu, a lot of it has been touched. Not much has been left untouched. But there is still land that has been untouched, that hasn't been corrupted by this Babylon system that hasn't been corrupted by the hand of the beast. And it is beautiful. It's sustaining. It's life-giving. It is spiritually enriching. And in leaving the city to go visit that with my family and feeling rejuvenated with God's presence, coming back to the city has no allure anymore. And every single thing that happens in this place reveals more truth about what God wants for us, what Jah wants for us, and how the beast is trying to corrupt his plan, his kingdom, but how he will fail. He will not succeed. He will be unable to corrupt what God has provided this beautiful island, this nature, this creation, his creation, the beast will not be able to conquer or vanquish 
the one that is to vanquish the beast through his son, Jesus Christos. So over the past four years, I've been slowly growing not only in the ways of this place, but in truth and light and in his beauty. And if anybody is interested in really seeing Babylon superimposed on God's beauty, I suggest you come and visit Oahu. Oahu can show you what you may have been missing somewhere else. I came from Kansas, and in Kansas, the land is flat. It is bowled over by Babylon. All the rolling plains and the beautiful sea of grassland that the Native Americans had cultivated there for the buffalo to thrive and flourish have been erased by fields and by people whose spirits have been marginalized by the work that the beast has imposed on them, that they've imposed on themselves, forgetting that Jah provides. And you might be in a place like that, you might be in a place where it's sprawling urban design, buildings, cars, trains, underground rail, and you may not be exposed to nature on a daily basis other than a park or a small place in your community that you can experience nature just for a little bit, and then you go right back into the rat race. But in Oahu, the majesty of God's beauty is all around. And it's so painfully obvious to see Satan's creation, his ideal, superimposed on the truth of God's beauty. And the purity of the energy of God flowing through this place can reveal the true nature of his beauty, his light, his way, and his love for you. And what Satan tries to place on top of that, it won't last. It won't last in your heart. It won't last in this place. And it won't last the world over. Because people are waking up. Everyone is waking up to the truth through here, through here, through here, and through and through. That truth is coming to light, whether it is in the smallest thing that you've chosen to make a change for the better in your life, or whether it be a vast change that you've undertaken, or ways that you're contributing to the good and the welfare of all humanity and of this beautiful creation, the earth, the universe, this life, whatever you're doing to put positivity out there, that's a good thing. That is the victory. That will be the victory, God's victory through you in this place because the concrete jungle will fall. The vines will creep over it and the winds will blow, and the earth will quake, and those buildings will tumble, just like the walls of Jericho tumbled. The victory is at hand. And Oahu was one of the last places on earth to be conquered, or that the beast thought that he had conquered. But it will rise again, and... God's light will rise again in your heart if it hasn't yet. And if it has, it's welling up. Trod your circles around Jericho. Stomp your feet and raise your voice and you will be heard and those walls will tumble down. Ross Nick reporting, peace, love, aloha. 
Shout out to Desi Hotep, Cupid Valentino, your channel is boss. Shout out to Ross Iadonis, the knowledge that you're putting out there, the teachings you're putting out there to help I and I brethren. We hear you. Your congregation is here. Jaws congregation. Keep putting it out there. Keep the study. Keep the faith. One love. Peace.